Kulin da Afayin Dalit, Gutvoch. An animal with a dangling limb. Does the Shechita have an effect on the limb? That the limb is not Tomei anymore? So it depends. Do we say Shechita Oise Nipul or Ein Shechita Oise Nipul? Does Shechita have the effect that retroactively we say that the limb was detached? Now, if the limb was detached, Shechita Oise Nipul, then the Shechita has no effect on that detached limb, and therefore that limb is Eber Menachai, and the Tumah is not removed. How do we know this concept? And we said the Maskana that ain't Shechita Oise Nipul, that Shechita has an effect on the detached limb, on the dangling limb, and a Misa Oise Nipul. In other words, if the animal dies, then we say that the limb was detached beforehand. How do we know that? Says the Gemara, we have a pasuk. That's where we get the lashon from. Nipol, that b'moisim is extra. We're talking about a sheretz that is dead. B'nevlasim, it's dead, and one of its limbs fell off. It's metama. So why do we need the word b'moisim? Since we have no use for it here by shratzim, let's use it for the case where you shecht an animal. And the Torah tells us, Yipol b'moisim, when they die, the Misa causes retroactive the limb to be detached. That's Misa Oisenipol, but Shechit on the, on the other hand, ain't Oisenipol, and it's not as if it's detached, and therefore the Shechita has an effect on the animal. Now, Rav Chizda says, the Machlagis that we had in the Mishnah, if an animal while giving birth, the Ubar stuck out its limb, and you shechted the mother, and then you cut off the limb. Is the limb Tomei Tumas Nevela or not Tomei Tumas Nevela? Says Rav Chisda, that Machalik is only in a live Vlad, that the fetus, the baby, is alive. And since there's Shechita in its, in its min, in its species, in other words, in live animals we have Shechita, therefore Chacham would say the Shechita has an effect on this limb. The remainder says it has no effect, it remains in Nevela. However, if the animal is dead, since there's no Shechita in dead animals, then even Chacham would, would agree that the shkita has no effect. Comes Rab and says, no, even by a dead animal, there's still a machloikas, whether or not the shkita of the mother has an effect on that limb. Now we learned a very interesting halach in the Mishnah by a fetus that didn't come to full term. Let's say by a cow, the pregnancy is supposed to be nine months, it was born in the eighth month. There's absolutely nothing you can do with this animal, you can't shecht it, you can never eat it. Why? The Mishnah uses a lashon, ein bimino yinishchat. In this species, in this category of animal, an eighth month, an eight month pregnancy, there is no animal that's shechted. Yet we have a b'risa that says the same words, yesh bimino yinishchat. There is, in its category, the eight month fetus can be shechted. What's the machlis between the b'risa and the Mishnah? Says the Gemara, do we consider the fact that you could shecht the mother and create a ben in the eighth month? Is that considered in its category, the Shechita. So our Mishnah obviously holds that's not considered a Shechita, just because you can shech the mother has nothing to do with shechting the, the baby. Yes, it has an effect on the baby, but you can't shech the baby. And the Brisa holds that effect is considered shechting the baby as well. Now, if you hold that yesh b'mino nishchat, now you have to come up with another source that a treif animal, let's say an animal has a hole in its heart, if you shech it, the Tumas Nevela is removed. We need another source. Says the Gemara, we learn it out according to this Mandoma from the Pasuk, B'chi Yomos Min HaBehema. Min HaBehema, the word Min is extra. Min means there are some animals that are in this category, the kosher animals, but they're treif now, and the Shechita works to remove the Nevela. Very interesting case. What happens if you stick your hand into, a, let's say, a cow and Shecht, the full-term baby that's inside the stomach. Does the shechita have an effect on the fetus or not? Now, says the Gemara, the question will be according to Remeyer and Chachamim. Remeyer holds that a full-term baby can never be a ben pekua. You would have to shech the baby. That's great if the baby's outside and already saw the light of day. But maybe Remeyer holds that if the baby is still inside the mother's stomach, the shechita would have no effect. And on the other hand, according to Chachamim, that say that even a nine-month a nine-month pregnancy, a full-term pregnancy, you could still do shechita on the mother and have a, it would have an effect on the baby. She, the baby would be a ben pekua. Maybe Chacham say that 
yes, you're right, the shechita works when you shech the mother, but it could also work on the baby. There's two ways to shech this baby. One, through shechting the mother, and two, through shechting the baby itself, while the baby's inside the stomach. The mother remains with a shiloh. Now, there's a Mishnah. New Mishnah. According to everybody, if the baby didn't come to full term, it was an eight-month pregnancy, and you shechted the mother, then this baby is a complete ben pakua l'kula alma. And even if the baby came to full term, but the baby is dead, ben pakua. The question is, what if it's a full term pregnancy and the baby's alive? So according to Remeyer, this baby is a complete cow for all halachas. Her gida is aser, chelev is aser, oisif is benoi, you're not allowed to shecht her and her mother, according to some shittas, even the father, in the same day. According to Chachamim, no, full term baby, no different. Ben Pekua. According to Rishim Shizuri, even if you find this animal five years later walking around in the field, you can take a bite out of it without shechting it. Full Ben Pekua. Everybody agrees that for Yisurim in the, in the Torah, like Revia of an animal, or Harisha, you're not allowed to plow a field with two types of animals, you don't consider this Ben Pekua as just another organ. It's a full-fledged animal, and it's us to do those things. Says Rishlokish, Machalik Rabbi Yechon Rishlokish. Rishlokish holds that according to Rabbi Yehuda, that you're allowed to eat the Giranosha and the Chelev of Ben Pekua, it has the same effect or some effect on the blood of the Ben Pekua. In other words, the blood, everybody agrees, is Asr. The question is, how strong is the Isr? So if you hold it, you're allowed to eat the Chelev, Rabbi Yehuda will hold that the blood is only a lav, it's not a, not a Isr Karis. And Rabbi Yehuda holds that it's a complete Isr Karis. Why would Rabbi Yehuda hold that's not an Isr Karis? Because Rabbi Yehuda will say, that there's two types of blood. There's Dama Nefesh, the first blood that comes out by the Shechita, and the rest of the blood. It says Rebuda, when do I say that all blood has Issacharis? That's when the first blood that comes out of the Dama Nefesh is Issacharis. So on the second blood, there's also Issacharis. But by Ben Pekua, there's no first blood. There's no Dama Nefesh. It gets shechted by the mother. So in Melo, he holds on the second blood as well. There's no Issacharis. It's just a laugh. What happens? There's a Halacha by Petr Hamar. You have a donkey. It's worth a lot of money. Instead of giving it to the Kayan, there's an easier way out. You could give the Kayan just a sheep, which is much cheaper. The question is, is a Ben Pekua, a live Ben Pekua, is it considered a sheep to give to the Kayan? So the answer is, according to a mayor that says that a live Ben Pekua that came to full term still needs, it's not considered a Ben Pekua, it would need a Shechita. So over here also, it's considered a full-fledged sheep, and you can give it to the Kayan. The question is, according to Chacham, that say you, it's considered a Ben Pekua, can you give this to the kain or not? So according to Ravashi, you could. According to Marzutra, you can't. Why? Because Marzutra says you learn Xeris Shava Sese from Karben Pesach. Just like a Karben Pesach, you can't use a Ben Pekua. Why can't you use it? Very interesting. Why can't you use a Ben Pekua for Karben Pesach? The answer is, says Rashi, because it's considered as if it was born with a Caesarean. It's a Yoyte Doifen, and that's not good for a Karben Pesach. According to Taisvis, because it's considered shechted already. We said that a Ben Pekua doesn't have Simonim, you can't shecht it. So how are you going to bring it as a Karben Pesach? And therefore, you can't use it as a Petr Hamar. Another question. You found a Ben Pekua, a live Ben Pekua, you shechted the mother. What Hilchas Tuma does the Ben Pekua have? In other words, if the mother who's dead is food, she is susceptible to Tuma. So let's say she becomes a Rishan the Tuma. Does the Ben Pekua also become a Rishan? Or does the Ben Pekua go down one step as if it touched a Rishan and it would become a Shani? So Rebbe says it becomes a Shani, and there's a few things that he would have to he would have to explain certain things, but we don't have a lot of time to get into it. And Rishlakish says he is considered a Rishain, just like a nut has a shell, the mother is the shell, and he's a Rishain, and he would have to explain certain things. And with that, we will finish tonight. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you in Mirza Shem tomorrow.